Hey, recording. Hi, I'm Jeff Rapport, and this is Metal Rolls TV, and I'm here with Taylor Negron, and uh, we're in bed together, because he owed it to me, because uh, this interview is four and a half hours in the making, right? It took a long time for us to get here, and, I, and I'm, you know, it, but it's nice to just lay down once in a while and just rest. Right. It's relaxing. I feel like I'm so close to you right now. You're a nice guy. I mean, this is Facebook. Yeah. This is Facebook. This is a like. We did. We met on Facebook, and now look at us. We're in bed together. It's beautiful. So I have a couple questions for you. But Actually. we're in bed in the 17th century style. Yes. This is like the way the, you know, the court of Louis XIV was. Yeah, it's very fancy. Very, very fancy. I just wish we could have Queen Anne's nipples right now. Ooh, that which sounds are, exciting. Which are made out of meringue. Yeah, <laughs> really? Yeah. I it's wish we had like the canopy and everything. That would be really nice. In a way we do. Can we get some like some maidens to feed us grapes? <laughs> yeah, they're right yeah. behind the camera right now. <laughs> Okay, so the first one I question I have to ask you is, um, did you have to have, get a note from Epstein's mother to be here today? Who's Epstein? I figured you got this. It was a Puerto Rican Jew joke. Oh, Puerto the Puerto Jew. Rican Jew joke. Welcome back, oh, Cotter. Yeah. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know, on. I know. I thought was, that was a little was dead clever, on. Right? That's a little dead on. Pretty clever, huh? Um, you know what? Uh, all Puerto Rican Jews are truant. Our parents don't know where we are. Right. We're constantly just on the subway car heading to another borough. So no one knows where I'm at. Well, they know now because it's on film. I'm in New Jersey yeah. again with a journalist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, the, I, all of a sudden I feel like Penny Lane. Yeah. Or the or the rock star. I'm the rock star. You are. You're yeah. a rock star. So one thing I, I was excited to see when I looked at your uh, your bio and stuff is that you run the dating game. Guess what? I was on the dating game too. Were you really? Yep. When? In 1986. Oh, you were in the new dating game. Yeah, I was in the new, dating. I was in the middle dating. Lane Joyce. Okay, I was Jim Lang, Chuck Barris. I won enough rice aroni to clog the San Francisco Bay. The bachelorette came up and said, Bachelor number one, if you could be any kind of car in the world, what kind of car would you be? And I said, used. <laughs> Bachelor number one, if you were my alarm clock in the morning, how would you wake me up? And I said, with a big dong. Did you really say that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, 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 Chuck Paris liked me, and I, and I won, and um, you know what? It was a very interesting thing because um, I learned how to be on TV from the dating game. How were you? How was it that you were on there thirteen times though? I mean, how did because they, they liked me because I, I, I was loose and I was easy, and I would go anytime they called me. They would call me at two o'clock and they say, "Could you be here in ten minutes?" And I'd go, "Yeah," and I go. <laughs> And I would go running down the street, or on my bike, or I didn't even have a car, and I'd hitchhike. Because part of be having a successful life, and I think I do have a successful life, is appearing and smiling. And just being there. Yeah. On time. I think when you see me, you'll see I wasn't so loose. I was like so wound up like a top, I looked like my head was going to explode. <laughs> when <laughs> you're so on nervous. TV? Yeah, it was my first oh. time on TV. It could be very nervous. It's very nerve wracking. I had like a truck. I was like... You'll see it. It's pretty amusing. You know, I saw Diane Sawyer the other night on the red carpet for this event with Bruce Springsteen. And, and, and I said, God, you work really, really hard, don't you? And she said, she grabbed me. She goes, yes, I do. And I go, we worry about you. We love you, Diane. And she said, oh, the next time you see me in TV, will you just pull me out? I thought that was great. Just Diane. Ah. Oh. <laughs> what a yeah. Diane. Hey, Diane. Yeah, is she under here? <laughs> I'm looking for her now. Now, you studied a, a comedy at a private seminar with Lucille Ball. I did. Right? I did, and I uh, was her assistant. Really? Yes. I was Lucille Ball's assistant. You can read about that if you Google Tuesdays with Lucy, which is a piece that I wrote for um, Hillary Carlip. And also I did it on NPR, on public radio. Uh, Tuesdays with Lucy and I was with her and I learned a lot from her I learned um, to be uh, good I learned how to be brilliant I learned how to be above the call of duty and I learned how to work with props and I learned how to be happy because Lucille Ball was so unhappy really? yeah she was unhappy because she wanted a world and she didn't get it and she got pissed off and, and I learned that, you know, whatever you get, just be happy with it. 
true. Because life is very, very short. Exactly. That's what we were talking about earlier, actually, mm -hmm. before this interview. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, you get hit by this uh, firestorm of comets and meteorites, and you get go into another orbit, and sometimes that orbit is just a shortcut. Home. And, sure. and, and home is not a place, it's, it's, it's a purpose. So true. Yeah. Is this comfortable? Yeah, let's take a nap real quick. <laughs> now you're um you're in I didn't, didn't tell you this because I just finished it, but you're in my favorite movie of all time, which is Better Off Dead. People love Better Off Dead. I, I think. Now, when you made that movie, you're also friends with Savage Steve Holland. Yeah, I, I was in. I have been in everything that he ever made. Now, did you did you guys have any idea that that would become such a cult classic when you were making it? No, you know, all the movies that I've been in, and I've been in a lot of iconic, huge movies, when we were making it, we never thought. We did, did never thought that Fast Times would be that big or Easy Money or any, any of that. It's like this thing I learned that just, if once again, if you appear and have fun, the contract will appear later. So we just did what we were doing, and I think Steve is a genius, Steve Holm is a genius, and we just, the jello moved, and the dog did that, and I knocked on the door, and he said, say what you say, and, and, and there you go. And because it was all, and it, it had genuine purpose. We all agreed that this was funny, that, that Beth was gone. Right. I still think, to me, one of the funniest lines of that entire movie was actually with Kim Darby, where she just says, but it has raisins in it. You like raisins. Like, I don't know why, but I find that, like, the funniest, that just really well, struck me I mean, me the thing hilarious. about that movies are, it can be so, in the Oscars they talked about it this year, there is that moment that's so ridiculously human, you're humbled by the humanity of it. It's like, you know, a kit, that's why kitten videos are so popular, they're just, and they're not even human. Right. <laughs> why are kitten videos so popular? People like cats. My daughter loves cats frightened of them. I believe that they are of an alien blood origin. My mother's always saying, they have those little mouths. She hates those little mouths. They go, Wee! it's not like Satan. Or, she she hates Lu them. Louis Anderson used to say, oh, they lick the butter. What? <laughs> they lick the butter. You know, the, the minute you go away, the cat's like... They're weird. They're very weird. You know what? I don't want any animals around me. I, I, I'd like a nice a turtle and a hippopotamus. That's all I want. <laughs> hippopotamus. That's, that, you know, all these people have those. Well, everybody just <laughs> wants animals around them because they don't talk. You know, if, if an animal, an animal, you could be on the phone and the animal will be under the couch and the animal will never say, that's a lie. That's true. Now, uh, one, one, one crazy summer came out that, uh, it almost felt like a sequel, but yet it wasn't. I know. It was like an Andy Hardy movie. It was the same people, right. the same thing, but a different name yeah. and a different year. Did he meet, did he, what was the thinking behind that? Because I think that he had these like three cartoon sagas, these myths in his head, and he just played them out, and the studio, you know, it, it made money for the studio, so he just did it. Yeah. Now, I understand you're also friends with another, uh, what I consider a comedy legend, uh, uh, Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi? Yeah. Do you have a good story you can tell us about her? She seems like a really, like, awesome, down-to-earth person. I mean, I don't know her personally, but just, just yeah, she's seeing her a, and stuff. You know, she's, she's, uh, you know, it's funny. I watch her on The View because I really, truly, she's like a fire to me, a, a warm fireplace. I did a movie with her. But, hey, look, I met her in the 70s at La Jolla. Her name was Karen Johnson. Then... In 1981 or 83, she's there at the comedy store, and Streisand and Spielberg, and everybody's there to watch this crazy black chick do this thing. And I went up to her afterwards, and I said, Hi, my name is Taylor Negron, and you're Whoopi Goldberg, and I'm so... And she goes, It's Karen Johnson. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Karen, you're doing very well for yourself. She did. You know, and like she said, I said, Are you going to be... I remember at the comedy store, I said, Are you going to be in the color purple? And she said... I may play dirt in that film. <laughs> but you know what? I, I, did, I did Call Me Claus, you know, about the first Black Santa, which was with Garth, um, what's the guy's name? The musical guy, Garth? Garth Brooks. Garth Brooks. Yeah. He made a beautiful movie, Call Me Claus, with Nigel, Sir Nigel Hawthorne and myself and Whoopi. And, and that's like a, a, a classic. I'm so proud of that movie that we, we play Christmas Eve every year. 
So Whoopi, Whoopi gave me that. She's a sweet girl. Whoopi? She's under here, sir? You know who's under there is Sherry Shepard, so... Ooh. Sherry. I'm hoping somebody's eventually going to be out here, because this is getting weird. <laughs> Monster Mania. You know, at this point, it's daylight like savings, so let's just watch Saturday Night Live and go to bed. Now, you, of course, have uh, some rock roots, because your cousin, um, Chuck, yeah. from Three Dog Night, and mm -hmm. actually the vocalist of him. Mm -hmm. I'm also friends with him on Facebook. You friends with him on Facebook? Yes. He wishes me a happy birthday every year. It's quite lovely. That's very nice. Yeah. But um, what is your most uh, metal moment? Well, I guess my most metal moment, honestly, is that Anthrax wrote a song about me called I Am The Man. That is, uh, uh, you know... Oh, yeah, yeah. From, I'm uh, the man. I'm the man. Yeah, that's... I'm, I'm so bad I should be deported. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm so bad I should be in detention, which is based on that movie that I did in Easy Money. So Anthrax wrote a song about me called I'm the Man, and they sampled me. And that's pure heavy metal satisfaction. Yeah. And I actually love Anthrax. Have you met those guys? No. No? No. I don't know. I, you know, I, never, I, I don't remember anything. Well, you remember Scott Ian he's got a really long beard. You know. He's short. But I do remember I went to school with Peter Buck from R.E.M. Not exactly metal, but still. Not metal, but yeah. still, you know, uh, it, it, there's an alloy in there. <laughs> it's part of the chart? Absolutely. Yeah. Peter Buck, come on. Yeah. They, they have a pretty big guy. Peter Buck's a genius. And in the third grade, I saw nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we were in the third and the fourth grade. Okay. okay. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. His kid is over there.